function transformations. So in my last video, I talked about the parent functions. The parent functions. And I think I said that there was 10 of them that we're gonna be looking at. Now the parent functions are always gonna be y equals f of x. And then f of x is gonna be something. So the 10 parent functions that we looked at, we're gonna be using those when we look at function transformations. Now, there's three different types of transformations. Three types of transformations. The first type is called the translations. So the first type is called the translations. Now, the translations deal with moving something around. So you could move something up, you could move something down, you could also move something to the left, and you can move something to the right. So whichever direction you're moving, those are going to be called translations. So that's the first type. The second type is called dilations. Dilations. Now dilations mean you're either stretching or shrinking. So you can stretch a function or you can shrink a function down. And if you've ever been to an eye doctor and he said, we're gonna dilate your pupils, that means he's gonna shine a light that makes your pupils stretch. So that's what a dilation is. You're either growing, stretching, or you're shrinking, also known as contracting. Now the third type of transformations is the last one we're gonna talk about but the last type is called reflections. Reflections. And usually we reflect over a line. You can reflect over the x-axis or you can reflect over the y-axis. And I'll show you what that looks like when we get to that. So the three types of transformations. You got your translations, you got your dilations, and you got your reflections. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, translations. So if you have a function and you add a number to it, like let's say you add C, that means you're going up by C. Okay? If you have a function and you subtract C, what would that mean? That means you're not going up anymore, you're going down C. So subtracting means you're going down. And then what you can do is you can go left or right as well. So if you have F where on the inside of the parentheses you have a plus C, that means you're going left C. You're going left C. And then if you're subtracting on the inside, let's say you have X minus C on the inside of the parentheses, that means you're going to the right by C. You're going to the right by C. So that's the difference between up, down, and left, right. Left, you're always adding. Right, you're always subtracting. Okay? Now let's look at dilations. Dilations, you could either stretch or you can shrink. So dilations is when you actually multiply by C. So let's say I take a function f of x and we multiply it on the outside by C. Well, if we multiply by C and let's say c is greater than 1, then we're going to have a vertical stretch. We're going to have a vertical stretch by c, if c is greater than 1. But what if c is less than 1, right? What if c is less than 1? Let's say c is between 0 and 1 then we really have a fraction on our hands. And this would be a vertical shrink. A vertical shrink. That's if you're multiplying by a number that's less than one, but greater than zero. Now, the interesting thing to know about this is you are multiplying by C and you get either a vertical stretch or a vertical shrink. Well, if you have a vertical stretch, that's the same thing as a horizontal shrink. So a vertical stretch is the same thing 
is the same thing as a horizontal shrink. Think about it that way. So this, a vertical stretch up here, this would be a horizontal shrink. And vice versa, if you have a vertical shrink, that's the same thing as a horizontal stretch. So that's a key piece of information to keep in mind. Vertical stretch is a horizontal shrink, at least when you're dealing with functions. Okay, so that's stretching and shrinking, and we call that dilations. Now the last thing we're going to talk about is reflections. Now reflections happen if you multiply by a negative number. So let's say you have the negative on the outside. Let's say you have negative f of x. Well, if that's the case, then you're multiplying by a negative number on the outside. That's a reflection over the x-axis. Or we say reflection about the x-axis. Reflection about the x-axis. So that's if the negative is on the outside. But what if the negative is on the inside of the parentheses? What if I had f of negative x? Well, instead of reflecting about the x-axis this time, this is going to be a reflection about the y-axis. Reflection about the y-axis. So important to keep in mind, where the negative is, is going to determine which axis you're reflecting over. Okay? So that is reflections. Now, let's do a couple examples. Let's say we have f of x equals 3 times x minus 2 squared plus 5. What would the transformation be, and what would the parent function be? Now, the parent function is just whichever function we're dealing with at the moment. And usually, when we write out the parent function, I use p of x. So in this situation, p of x would be the quadratic function, or just x squared. So we're dealing with an x squared in the problem. So what are the transformations going to be? Well, since we're adding 5 on the outside, that means we're going up by 5. We're going up by 5. And since we're subtracting 2 on the inside, that means we're going right by 2 right by 2. And then the last transformation to look at is this 3 on the outside. Since this 3 is being multiplied by whatever comes after it, that's going to be a dilation. This is going to be a vertical stretch by 3. Vertical stretch, vertical stretch by 3 or a factor of 3 is usually what we say, factor of 3. So you're basically grabbing the function and you're stretching it vertically and you get that vertical stretch. And I could also write that this is the same thing as a horizontal shrink. This is the same thing as a horizontal shrink. So that's also important to know. Okay, so that's an example of a dilation and a translation but what if this was a negative 3? A negative 3. Well, then that would be a reflection. It would be a reflection about the x-axis. So all three types of transformations are used in this example. So I hope that helps you. That's transformations.